Hi again, another 2K Sports edition of Cactus League Baseball moving through the spring training one step closer to day one regular season. Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, and John Crock. A look at Mark Burley. He'll be doing his best to get a W on the mound tonight. Steve, uh, let's try and go inside his mind. What's he thinking about against these Dodgers? As a hitter, when you face Mark Burley, you have to be ready. Be ready to swing the bat. He's a guy that's very efficient in the zone. He throws strikes and he works quickly. Make him get the ball up. Sponsored by Pepsi, a chance to check out the Dodgers lineup. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, the thing you notice about Rafael for call, he's a guy who's a switch hitter. He has a little pop in his bat, but he's more the guy that needs to get on base and make things happen for his team and score runs with his legs. The thing about him is, though, you look throughout his career, it seems like every year he's played, he's been in the postseason. He's a winner. And Matt Kemp to bat. He'll be the leadoff man as we get ready to get things going. Fielder, number 27, Matt Kemp. First pitch inside with a fastball, ball one. Now if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. Here's the 1-0 from Burley. Swung on line to right center field. And he's on. That's a nice way to jump start your offense. Now batting, and now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. So Steve, the thoughts on a fielder here. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And Russell Martin at the plate. Runner on first. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Up the middle. And he'll try to make the play. There's one. Over to first and safe. Very close play. They will not get the double play. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. Now batting with one down, Manny Ramirez. Well, back in July of last year, Mark Burley threw that perfect game for the Chicago White Sox. And I tell you what, kids, if you're watching a guy and you can't throw 95-96, take a good look at Mark Burley. He'll teach you how to pitch. Or Mark Burley, if any pitcher deserves to have a no-hitter, you gotta, you got to give it to him because... He pitches games, John. Well, he absolutely does. And the great thing about Mark Burley is he works so quickly that your defense is ready to go on every pitch. There's no lull in the game when he's out there. And here's Andre Ethier. Sliders in there for a called strike. Well, he gets the breaking ball right over the heart of the plate. He must have been looking for something else. The pitch. And Andre Ethier looks at that one for a ball. It'll even the count. Takes a swing at that fastball. Doesn't get to it. One and two. And Andre Ethier misses and he's gone. Strike three. No runs on a hit and they'll strand him. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And it'll be Clayton Kershaw doing the pitching. It'll be Los Angeles' starter. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? As a hitter facing Clayton Kershaw, you want to try to work hitters' count. Be patient. Try to get ahead to where you can get a fastball to hit. Because if you fall behind, you know you're going to get that quality curveball, and you've got no chance because it's devastating. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball, strike one. His lifetime average, 288 against the Dodgers. This one's grounded to second. Belliard, one away now. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. Scouting pick, John, who are we looking at today? 
Well, you talk about a veteran presence in the middle of a lineup. Paul Canerco has been one of the more consistent power hitters in baseball over the last eight to ten years. He's a guy that just does it in a calm, quiet way. He doesn't put up the huge monster numbers, but he puts up the consistent numbers every year. But he also loves to get that big hit. Let's see if he can deliver one here in this one. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. The Dodgers were a formidable road opponent in 2009. Not quite as good as they were at home, but above 500, played good baseball on the road. Kershaw's pitch swung on and missed 0 1. Talk about road records. There aren't many teams, uh, there have only been three or four really last year that did well on the road. Dodgers, 45 victories. Here. Yeah, and, and you know, they had a mismatched pitching staff. Chad Billingsley was hurt a lot. Randy Wolf emerged as the ace of that staff. Clayton Kershaw came on late in the season to put up a great season for them. But it was their offense that carried them. Those young kids, they don't care if they're home or away. I think the other thing, their bullpen was so consistently good all season long that when they were behind, they held the deficits and gave the offense a chance to come back and win. And when they were ahead, they closed it out, and Broxton got it done late. And here's Paul Canerco. Had a real strong offensive game last time out. Three big base hits. Swings at that first delivery. Curveball by him on one. Oh, what a great curveball right there. You see how he fooled the hitter and got him way out in front. Strike two. No balls and two strikes. Canerco now will look to tighten up that zone. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. No scoring here, ending this half inning. And the Dodgers, their turn coming up. And Blake's batting. Los Angeles Dodgers, third base, number 23, Casey Blake. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. That fastball just froze him on the inside corner. Now we're going to see where he goes. Look for something soft, possibly away. On the way. Strike two. Strike two. Casey Blake, you'll be careful on the next one. Boy, that good late movement down that cut fastball. Unbelievable action on that pitch. And that one is swung out and missed by Casey Blake. Let's see this one again in KK. It's a changeup. Well, a real risky pitch right there, and he comes out of it alive. That one's right down the middle of the plate, and the batter just swung through it. Mm, John, he's lucky he didn't get tattooed on that. Well, you're absolutely right. The only player who wants that last pitch back more than the pitcher is the hitter. And Ronnie Belliard up. Pitch on the way. Change up just misses. 1 and 0. Strike. 1 0 pitch, a slider in there. 1 1. Well, the back door breaking ball right there. They set up away and executed the pitch perfectly. The 1 1 pitch. Oh. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss by Belliard. Count knotted up. Now, if you got a chance to see the last game, you saw he seemed a little bit flustered at the plate, expanding the strike zone, striking out twice in that game. And Ronnie Belliard goes down swinging strike three. This pitch has a little life to it at 84 on the gun. It's a pretty good movement. Well, sometimes you get fooled so badly, there's just nothing else you can do but hope and pray that you put the ball in play, hopefully foul, to get another pitch to hit. Two outs, base is empty. That one's going to be outside. Ball one. The 1 0 now. Right. On the outside corner, 1 and 1. I don't think he liked that call very much, but the reality is he couldn't hit that any day of the week. That's a great pitch. 
Here's the delivery. Ground ball to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws on to first. Side is retired. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. No runs yet for the Dodgers. And it is not a warm day by any means. Scarves, winter jackets out. Carlos Quentin. Leading it off, Carlos Quentin. I uh, got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now. Driving in runs, hit a big shot last game out there, and got to have some confidence coming into today. Swung on and ripped towards second. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. Here's Quinton stretching it. He'll hold there at second base, crediting with a double. But what a great swing right there. And anytime you can put yourself in scoring position with no outs, you're looking for big things to happen. And Beckham's in the box. Base runner at second with nobody out. Has to dive, but he's back in there in time. And Kershaw's pitch looked at it. First strike, 0-1. Well, the pitcher going for that hole and most hitters swing up and in. He found that strike zone with a four-seam fastball and he couldn't get to it. Catcher can't control it. He delivers. There's a ball, hit well, a high drive deep into center field. And out of here, a home run, two runs, one swing. One swing of the bat, two RBIs, chances of winning improve. A look at our Pepsi WPHI. Now Gary looked like he was setting on that pitch. He got it and drove it out of the park. What they're going to want to do in this ball game now is take advantage of that and build that momentum up. Now they need to still be aggressive out there and go right after. Number 51. Well, that's what you want. Run support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here. And the pitch taken for a strike by Rios. This is, Steve, I guess, with that big fly, the inning these guys were hoping for. Well, that's exactly right, Gary. I mean, you want to have the big inning. When you get that opportunity, put a crooked number up on the board. And that's out number one stepping in the bag. Number 12. Going to be Przinski. He had four hits and 13 ABs last year off the Dodgers. Base is empty with one away. Chris saw his pitch, swung on and missed 0-1. Get a little extra giddy up on that one as he just blows it right by him. He deals. Ground ball played. Blake. So Krasinski retired. Third base. Number 24. And here's Martian. Now going to try to make some contact in this ball game today because he swung and missed a little bit too much, striking out twice in his last game. And Kershaw's pitch swung right through that one. Well, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Ground ball played. Blake. And that'll put Tien on first. That'll bring up Mark Kotze. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. That swung on and a liner here. And another, wow, that hitting coach is smiling. A tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on, and he's carrying it into this one with another good start. And Juan Pierre to bat. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. 
A smash between short and third. Throw on to second base, force play, side retired. So the pitching breaks down a bit here in the second. They get out to a two run lead. The bats are working. The White Sox on top, two to nothing. Taking a count of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead. Rafael Fercal leading it up. Looking to build offensively off his last game where he had a couple of RBIs and trying to carry that into this one as well. It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. That two seam fastball is such an effective pitch. One, because it gets ground ball outs, but two, it sets up his other pitches. Swung on, line softly towards center. And it is in there. That's going to bring the, the tying plate. run to the plate. Here's a look at the teams who got it done last year at the plate. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the Dodgers. Second, the Mets. Marlins third. Fourth spot, the Braves. And we've got the Cardinals, who are number five. We're going to watch the team with the best batting average last year in this game today. And I tell you what, this entire lineup can swing the bat. There is no break in anywhere in this lineup. You think you can find someone you can pitch to and get outs? No, not in this lineup. They all can hit. And this at bat already 0-1. First pitch was a strike. And here's the pitch. Good hard slider swung on a miss 0 and 2. And it holds at 0 and 2. On the ground to short, and he's got it. That retires Buck. Oh, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ran. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. With the runner in scoring position, here's Matt Kemp. Ability to steal bases last year among the league's top ten. Now Kemp gets set. Cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0 1. He's the guy on this team that they go to. If they need the stolen base, he's the man. Here's a swing and a fly ball. This one towards Pierre. Two away. This ball hit down the line. Got a good jump on it. Able to roam over and put it away. An RBI chance. Russell Martin. He'd like to make contact right here. Two outs and a runner on second. Here's Martin's first look. Strike one. And Burley gets it by. Called strike and the count will go to 0 and 1. But Gary, these hitters are really now going to have to focus on his changeup. It is his best pitch and it is one of the best around. Swing and a miss and he's behind on the count 0 and 2. You, know, you talk about how do you approach this changeup, Gary? Well, I tell you what, it's very, very difficult as a hitter. Because if you look change up, then the fastball is going to beat you. But if you try to speed up for the fastball, then you're way out in front on the changeup. Mark Burley, that's another good inning. He continues to dominate through three innings of work. And it'll be the White Sox. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. That contributed offensively in their last game with a couple of RBIs. See if he can't do it again today. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Swing. Hot shot. That's a huge out right there. You think maybe you're not going to get to it. And he's able to make a tremendous play out here. Canerco at the plate. 
Uh, thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal any bases. He has hardly any speed left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. That's going to bring Carlos Quentin up. Canerco is certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player, because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive one. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And, you know, you remember back to that World Series year in 2005 with the White Sox, how clutch he was for that team that entire season, and he's still that way at this stage in his career. That's strike two, and Clayton Kershaw's in charge in this at bat right now. Oh, look at that big 12 to 6 breaking ball right there. That's a tough pitch for any hitter to stay back on. Out in front, swinging early. Quentin lays off that one. It's high. Well, that's just some good old country hardball right there. Four seam fastball up in the zone. Kershaw with a windup. Swing and a liner to right center. And he gets it down. He's two for two now. The opportunity for offense is right now. All right, takes this one-two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit when you're behind in the count. You just want contact, and he got it. One out with runners at first and second. And the first pitch. The 0-0 delivery of fastball taken for a strike. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. A swing and a foul off to the right side. Beckham made his debut in June and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the majors. Which certainly did and you talk to White Sox personnel and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. Two away. And that will keep the runners. They have to stay at first and second. At the plate. He's got a shot of getting out of this now. Big time out. He's got two down. He's only one out away from working out of this jam. Rios. And he starts Rios out. Fastball in there for a called strike. Velocity and location are absolutely critical. That pitch was exactly where he wanted to throw it. And the 0-1 by Kershaw. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Here's the delivery. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Picked up by Fercal. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And heading to the dugout, Clayton Kershaw. Third inning in the books. It's Manny Ramirez to lead it off. 0 for 1 thus far. Manny Ramirez. Burley with a delivery. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And so Ramirez retired. It's a nice throw by the shortstop, and the key to that is having good feet. When an infielder makes bad throws, it's not because of his arm, it's because of his feet. And Andre Ethier to bat. Well, Andre Ethier had a breakout year for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Not only that, the 31 homers, 106 RBI. You talk about clutch hit late in the games. That's what made him so special last year. Well, he hit this one well, but it hangs up long enough to give the left fielder just enough time to run underneath and make the catch. Here's the pitch to Blake. And it goes foul. Oh, and one. Burley kicks Strike and delivers. Two. Strike two. Casey Blake, you'll be careful on the next one. Well, they've got a couple hits here, and we're into the fourth inning, so they maybe they're starting to get something going. And the second time through the lineup, maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. 
So uh, he ended that half inning with a strikeout. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your mind. The White Sox maintaining their lead. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. And the first pitch. Foul. Fouled away. That's strike two, and Clayton Kershaw's in charge in this at bat right now. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Hard grounded a short. Oh, and so Pierzynski retired. And here's Martin. Base hit his last time. One out, nobody on. Kershaw with a windup. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Ground ball played. Blake. And that'll set down Tian. Solid fundamentals. Make the play, catch the ball first, then worry about the throw. And with that kind of arm, you never have to worry about the throw. Two outs and nobody on. Here's the first pitch to Kotsake. It's fouled off. Hit hard on the ground to short. And it gets through two for two. So Juan Pierre will come up well, with that big two out hit right there in this inning. You know the managers in there telling him, let's not let him breathe. Let's not let him get that third out. Let's score before this inning's over. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. And a swing and a hit. It's going to be Ramirez. And he's there to retire the sun. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on at first. The White Sox two. The Dodgers nothing. And leading it off, Ronnie Belliard. Second baseman, number 10, Ronnie Belliard. Burley with a delivery. Hit on the ground towards second. Beckham. And Belliard set down. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, first baseman. It's going to be Loney now. Loney. Well, the Dodgers have a special group of young players, and James Loney fits into that mold with Matt Kemp and Andre Ethier. These are three guys that can build a foundation for a team. And when Mary Ramirez went out in 2008, that's when this team took off and realized they can win without the star on their team. Mary Ramirez out of the line. And Quentin pulls it in. That's the second out. We're going to talk about settling in. How about retiring eight hitters in a row? I think he settled in. Base is empty and two down. First pitch, two for Cull. Strike one. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Well, offensively, they just have not been able to get anything going. Only one runner left on base, so they just need more opportunities and see if they can't capitalize on it. And Raphael for Cal watches that one go by to even the count. One for 12 last season against the White Sox. Now the 1 1 pitch on the ground to second. Beckham throws the first side as retired. So Mike Burley gets him 1 2 3. He's been effective through five now, enough to be on the good side of this pitching duel. 
And it'll be the White Sox. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He'll get things started. Home half, fifth inning. Kershaw with a windup. Hot shot towards the hole. And he'll step on the back. That'll be the first down. And here's Paul Canerco. Well, Paul Canerco just put together another solid season. He's never going to be a guy that hits for a great average, 265. But he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup. 28 home runs, 88 RBIs, and 152 games. That's it foul by Canerco. Canerco is certainly one of those players you look at as far as your offense is concerned in combined categories of runs and RBIs. He gets on base and he can bring base runners in. Yeah. Now a swing and a shot toward second. Two down. Nice easy soft round ball to second. Doesn't have any trouble at all with that one. And retires at first base. Base is empty with two outs. First pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. No strikeouts, but you talk about confidence. Four pitches, three batters gone. The White Sox, two. The Dodgers, nothing. And there you see manager Joe Torre. Designated hitter. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. It's going to be Barton. Now, if you didn't get a chance to see his last game, he picked up a couple of RBIs in that one. Swing of the bat. Here's the first pitch. Fastball swung on a miss. Stowe and one. Gary, he's not felt any pressure out there on the mound. The defense has not felt that much pressure either. But only one runner left on base. And, you know, we're moving through the middle part of this ball game. So, you know, they're doing a nice job shutting down this offense. And he fouls off another one. Well, that pitch right there up in the strike zone is a pitch that normally this hitter would drive. But the fact that he's in the hole 0 and 2, he had to take a more defensive approach, and he just fouled it off. Fastball swung out and missed, struck him out, one away. Took a big hack at that one up in the zone. He's going to be seeing that one in his dreams all night long. And Matt Kemp digs in with one out. Well, the excitement that Matt Kemp brings to this lineup. And yeah, there's going to be struggles. That comes with youth. He's going to have some inconsistency. But the bottom line is the numbers are going to be there at the end of the year. And they're just going to get better and better and better as he figures out pitching in Major League Baseball. Now Kemp gets set. Good pitch from Burley. Swung on and missed. Kemp is uh, one of those that you didn't have to pay uh, a ton for originally a six round pick 2003 draft Dodgers are getting a lot more out of him than a six round pick well, they really are and the great thing that they love about Matt Kemp is the fact of how hard he works and how much he studies the game of baseball not only the opposing pitcher but his own pitcher so he can position himself better oh. defensively still 0 and 2. Pitch on the way. And Kemp fights off another one. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. And that one's too high, taken for a ball as Burley tried upstairs. The one two pitch and Matt Kemp will go down swinging and strike three now good pitch right at the knees there he swung right over the top of it and just couldn't put it in play and a shot here Russell Martin two down 
He's one for three up early. Here's Martin's first look. Good pitch from Burley. Swung on and missed. Ball. Good eye by Russell Martin. Stays away and it's even. Well, good movement on the cutter there, but he's got to get the ball down in the zone. He can get hurt with hitters throwing it up there. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's one and two now. I think the hitter was looking for something out over the plate that he could drive. They pounded a fastball down and in for a strike. Strikes him out, and that's going to do it here in the sixth inning. Steve, this performance we've marveled at continues. Absolutely untouchable. So they can't push across any runs. They've been shut out through the first six. The Dodgers unable to get on the board. The five, six, seven hitters coming up. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crump. And Beckham's in the box. Now Martin positions himself. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. Kemp will field. As he gets to it for the out. Well, this ball is hit into the left center field gap. The center fielder has priority over the left fielder. Good job taking charge. He called them off and made the play. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios. And that one's hit well. Ramirez is there. That one's gone. Now I just got under this one. 11 yield. They're able to make an easy catch. It's going to be Przinski. Grounded out his last time through. Base is empty and two down. First pitch on the way. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind in the count. Defensive stance at the plate. And A.J. Pruszynski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. So Clayton Kershaw gets on. That's a one, two, three. He's keeping his team in the ball game. Just needs some run support now. And the Dodgers, their turn coming up. It's Manny Ramirez to lead it off. 0 for 2 thus far. Manny Ramirez. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. And a swing and a miss. Good pitch from Burley. Deep into the ball game, only two hits for this offense, and clearly they've been overmatched, Gary, in this one. And you know they're going to have to try something. Try to lay down a bunt. Try to see if you can't wait them out, force them to throw more pitches, or get them out of the ball game. And this is bounced foul to the left side. Fastball misses inside, and it's one and two now. Brings him up. You can almost taste the adrenaline right now, Steve. You can just tell he's getting stronger as he goes along. Uh, he got so much confidence, he's just knocking the bats out of the batter's hands. And here's Andre Ethier. Well, Andre Ethier established himself as one of the top players in all of baseball. And you talk about the numbers, 31 home runs and 106 RBIs, hit over 270. This is a guy that's going to be around for a long, long time. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got about 0-1 right now. 
And for Andre Ethia, one of the interesting parts of his power game is he'll also pick up a few walks and keep the strikeouts down, John. Well, that's a big key. You know, he's a big about on-base percentage, but he's also, you know, early in the count. He's not afraid to turn on one and hit it out of the ballpark. Fastball is a waste pitch that time, one and two. And he got him. Strike three. And now with two outs in the seventh. The question is, can he keep this going? Well, you know what? It's different for every guy, but from what we see today, he is locked in, dominating stuff, and he looks strong. Two outs and nobody on. Here's the pitch to Blake. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. And Pierre grabs that one, and the side's retired. And now that's seven. Count them, seven shutout innings going. I think he's got the stuff to do it, Gary. I think he wants to finish the rest of this game. He's got the leg. The White Sox still on top. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Last inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. And Mark Tian up. He's going to get things going here. Home half, seventh inning. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Swing, contact, Kemp. And in there, he's two for three today. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. No one out and a runner on first. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Chris saw his pitch, swung on and missed 0-1. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. And he's out in front on that pitch, so he's in the hole now, 0 2. Swing and a miss on the breaker, one down. This one tails down. Look at it just dropping off the table right there with a big break at 83 miles per hour. A breaking ball right there gets him to swing. You can see that back leg kind of jelly bitten a little bit. He really used the off speed pitches during that at bat to get it over with. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Chris saw his pitch swung on and missed 0 1. Here's the pitch. He swings, hits a ball to right field. Two down. Now up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. Alexei. Two outs and a man on first. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0-1. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter. Swung late. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. This one into the alleyway. Should be extra bases. The field hitting. It is a classic piece of baseball. Especially on that inside pitch. It keeps the defense off guard when you can muscle the inside pitch to right field. A big opportunity right now for Paul Kernerko to deliver for his teammates, Gary. We're trying again here. Just one for three thus far. Runners at second and third with two out. And he starts Kernerko out. Kershaw's pitch swung on and missed 0 and 1. Boy, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it or he's got no chance to hit it. Line towards second. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. They get two men in scoring position. Couple of hits. Can't get them home, though. The White Sox, too. The Dodgers, nothing. Do up 6 7 8 in the lineup. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne.
Dan leading it off. Ronnie Belliard grounded out his last time up. And now Belliard gets set. Oh! It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that Burley pitch. Well, he's really only held him to two hits so far today, Gary. So he's been on top of his game out there. He's made it look easy. And, you know, it could possibly be a day the bullpen doesn't have to get used and can get some rest. One one on the way. Frozen on the changeup, and it's one and two now. Still one and two. He deals. Good eye there by Ronnie Belliard. Lays off it to even it. Got him! You know, they use the term filthy. I'm telling you what we've seen from him today. That's what he's throwing. Well, absolute filth. No question about it. He's got the hitters off balance. He's in complete control. Base is empty. One out. And Loney gets in. First pitch. Strike one. And Burley gets it by. Called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Well, James Loney has one of the sweeter swings in all of baseball, hitting 281. Thing is, you look at his size, 6'2, 220. The power's going to come once he figures it out. Only 13 home runs, but he did drive in 90 runs for the Dodgers in 2009. James Loney's position in the lineup will ultimately be determined by what kind of a clutch hitter he is. He can continue to pile up the RBIs as he did in 09. He's going to stay in the middle of that order. Well, that's the big thing. When you have so many young players like the Dodgers had in 2009, it takes a while to figure out where they're best suited to hit. In my opinion, I think James Loney's best suit to hit fifth or sixth in the lineup. And when he moved there in 2009, that's when he started producing runs. Two outs, bases empty. First pitch, two for Cowell. Slider just misses one and oh. One oh on the way. Runs up to bunt, gets this one down. Burley. The good hitters before they step in the batter's box check the corner infielders to check what their depth is. He looked around and realized I've got a chance for a bunt base hit. Well done. But Gary, when you're trailing, you don't want to run into outs, but they have good speed now at first base. May not be a bad idea to try to steal and get... Oh, for Kyle. Here we go. And he is safe at second. Hit in the air to left center. Rios will field. And Pierre grabs that one. And the side's retired. Some good work, Mark Burley. And he's looking like a power pitcher today. Lots of swings and misses. Now time for the White Sox. This is their chance in the home half of the eighth. Joe Torre in the dugout. And at this point in this game, thinking about offense, I'm sure he also needs some quality pitching. Got to give his bats a chance to get back. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Two for three thus far. First pitch to Quinton. Kershaw's pitch swung on and missed 0-1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0-2. On the way. You're out. Strike three. Quentin on a swing and a miss. He's out. This one tails down. Look at it just dropping off the table right there with a big break at 83 miles per hour. 
Fantastic piece of pitching to get that out, John. Well, that's the part of pitching you love. He's looking for a fastball. He's expecting a fastball. And then just drop one right off the table. What a pitch. And here's the first one. This one's oh. grounded foul. Wide of first. That's strike two, and Clayton Kershaw's in charge in this at bat right now. And that one swung on a miss by Gordon Becker. That's how you use your fastball, using it very effectively. Two consecutive punch outs. And he starts Rios out. Kershaw's pitch swung on and missed 0-1. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Ground ball played. Blake throws to first in time. That's three down. And a good half inning there. Gone in short order in this one. And the Dodgers, their turn coming up. Isaac Ian taking a look at you right there. He's got his club where he wants. Two insurance runs and hoping to close this one out. And here's Matt Kemp. He'll start the ninth. Burley with a delivery on the ground to first and they'll record the out at first base good timing on that play well, they might not have been able to get him out at the plate but a short right over the first and still retires his man Here's Martin's first look. And that swung on and hit. Rios. That is in. I mean, it's going to bring the tying run Andrew to the plate. Left fielder, number 99. Uh, maybe one of the best right hand hitters ever to play the game. Manny Ramirez up in a clutch situation. Got to love this showdown. Took a called third strike in his last time up. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Well, this offense has just been shut down in this one. I mean, they le they've left one runner on base the entire game. We're in the ninth inning here. They just have not had any real opportunities. Struck out another. One more, and he's got it done. Great pitching here today, Gary. Looks like he might make it all the way. One more out. That's all they need for the shutout. K-Cam presents the two-seamer. Take a look. And now, Andre Ethier. Although the steal is unlikely, it's not completely out of the question. They've got to find a way to get back into the game. And maybe if they get the right count in the right situation, they could start them. Fastball just misses and he falls behind 2 0. Here it comes. And a grounder is at the last out. Steve, that was one of the most outstanding pitching performances that we've seen in recent memory. For that final out, he's got a shutout. Well, he didn't miss a spot the entire game. He had great defensive play behind him, a great all around team effort. 
Well, they treated their hometown crowd to a phenomenal pitching performance in this one. A big win on the shoulders of their pitchers. I think you'll agree with me. We've got a perfect choice for the Pepsi Clutch performer. Our fantastic display by Mark Burley got it done today. Well, you couldn't have asked for a more dominant display on the mound than what we saw today. He was mixing his pitches well, changing speeds, but the thing you noticed, he didn't throw any pitches over the center of the plate. That's what made it so special. And when he needed it, he could get back and reach back and get that little bit extra when he needed that big out. Made it look easy out there today, Gary. And we got to see a terrific performance out of their starter, and he was able to ride that one on to victory. Well, an outstanding effort. He had everything working today, the good stuff and location to shut down the opponent. Great day for baseball here at 2K Sports. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crock, Steve Phillips, and our great 2K Sports crew. We wish you a great rest of the day or night, wherever you may be in baseball.